This video is going to cover the genetic disadvantages of, quote, racial purity in certain, or ethnic purity would probably be more pop, more of a um, correct term in the way I'm using it here. Basically, in certain populations that have stuck to as much of a puritanical approach to breeding as could be expected, uh, one of these is the most... Um, uh, prized amongst racial realists, and that's the Jewish community, the Ashkenazi Jews. Now, what people avoid, as I've stated, and what they avoid talking about when they talk about these high IQ Jewish folks, is actually the severe amounts of uh, mental derangement, mental retardation, and genetic diseases that, uh, that plague the Jewish people. Uh, one, obviously, is Tysaks. And this is because it's like uh, playing the lottery. When you buy a lot of tickets, you have a good chance at winning the lottery. But when you only buy a couple tickets, you don't have a good chance at winning the lottery. So a wide gene pool, a deep gene pool, increases your chances of winning the genetic lottery, especially if it's full of tasty little treats, such as, um, you know, high IQ, athletic performance, uh, aesthetically appealing physique, things of this nature. But when you cut the genetic pool down low, 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 and you're only seeking things like IQ, IQ, success in business, success in business, success in business, which is what the Jewish people have done over many millennia. Um, they have, uh, and, and money, of course, they have created um, a very narrow gene pool but also because of the religious uh, aspect, by religious I mean their own unique religion, they do not breed outside their tribe, okay? And that is very true. Um, the other group is the Amish. The Amish are very similar to the Jews. Um, I have a lot of respect for the Amish. In fact, my dad's family, before the Amish were like a real thing, they were um, Pennsylvania Dutch prior to becoming uh, Mormon. So the thing is, my family did have dealings with the Pennsylvania Dutch, okay? But that is many, many generations ago, okay? And also the Pennsylvania Dutch, we weren't uh, technically of the Amish or some community like that. The thing that I would like to say is with this, what you can see, and I'm gonna post links about the genetic disorders in them. We have an Amish market right up the road from me. Um, and you will see, in some instances, the girls are very beautiful, very aesthetically appealing. In other instances, you see dwarfism, uh, facial hair on women to the point where it's disturbing, uh, a lot of dwarfism, a lot of uh, mental derangement, a lot of uh, aggressive behavior in these people. You also see, and a lot, uh, this gets, and I, I'm not going to get into, I do not believe... I'm not a big believer in the genetic predisposition for things like schizophrenia, because I don't think it ever pans out. However, I do believe there is a genetic predisposition to mental derangement, and it's not the same as low IQ. It's something different. And you will see that some people just have a high prevalence of um, just plain being kooky and not correlating reality to the way it is, uh, more so than other people. Um, and I see this a lot. Uh, you will see that a lot in the Amish community. With the Jewish community, and I'm sure people know this, and it, it's both social conditioning, but a big part of it is genetics. The Jewish individuals are very paranoid about non-Jewish people always being out to get them. Okay, that is the very truth. That is very true. Anybody that has associated with Jewish people, and I've had Jewish friends, I'm not going to lie, they are very um, paranoid about non-Jews. They think, uh, many, 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 many years ago, I dated a girl that was, um, she converted to Methodism, or Methodism, uh, her family did. She didn't want to. And uh, she was Jewish, as was her whole family. You start talking to her parents, and you realize they were fake Christians. <laughs> they converted to being Methodist. Now, I, I did eventually, we went our separate ways uh, months later. But what you learn with the, the parents is the parents were actually only Christian because they were so terrified 
of what Christians might have thought of them for being Jewish. But what's hilarious is that particular kooky church they went to was one of these Israel, Israel churches, these pro-Israel churches. And I am going to finish up with a next video about how the only true conspiracy... Like, there's a lot about how the Catholic Church is bragging about how the Jews and the Catholics have never been closer. You got, obviously, the evangelical religion has been Jew-crazy for, like, fucking, uh, or for about 20 years now or so. So, my point is, the only true conspiracy with global domination, everybody wants the Illuminati, and the Freemasons, and the Jesuits, and to a little bit, it might be the Jesuits, but not really. What you see is you see a Christian-Jewish merger taking place. For example, on Facebook today, I follow a pro-life, pro-Catholic source and repost a lot of the stuff because I'm pro-life. And the chick posts about how Jews in the Supreme Court are standing strong against anti-Semitism. And I pointed out, I go, this is not pro-Catholic and this is not pro-Jewish. And she goes, no, but it shows, the girl that runs the page, this shows solidarity. Solidarity with who? Okay. It's not pro-Catholic and it's not pro-life. It's a pro-Catholic and pro-life site. Therefore, you see this, this, uh, this corruption, if you will, of Christianity proper. And that's just what I'm going to say.